everyone. Um, it's lovely to be here with you all this evening. Um, so Ad as Edda said, I'm Ashling. I work for Pax Christi in London, Wales, and we're um, a Catholic peace movement. Um, and so with that, we're also part of the Catholic Youth Ministry Federation, which kind of brings together people with um, working with young people in all kinds of different um, in faith environments, uh, just, just to share what we do really and support each other. So during COP26, I was lucky enough to go up to Glasgow with a small group um, and we were originally formed by um, the Columban Missionary Society, but they brought together lots of different groups um, including uh, kind of the Jesuits, La Data Sea Movement, Justice and Peace Scotland, Skiaf, Cathod. There's a whole list on the website. I'm not gonna go through it because that would be my five minutes up there and then. Um, but we all kind of came together to create what we classed or called an online vigil. And the idea was really how do we bring voices that we've heard maybe through our work or through encounter uh, with people who are most affected by climate change or people who are kind of in other parts of the world that won't be able to get to Glasgow to share their stories. Um, and really recognising that as people of faith who are called to kind of campaign for climate justice. And that actually it was important also just to, to pray for its success. You know, we, we want it to do well. And um, so it's kind of maybe um, a good idea for us to bring that together mindfully in a, in, a, in a kind of faith perspective. So a group of us kind of went off up to Glasgow and from 11 a.m. On, um, on Friday the 5th to 11 a.m. on Saturday the 6th, we broadcast 24 hours of kind of stories, of videos, of action, of prayer, um, all about climate change and kind of all directed um, at kind of COP26. So there were kind of videos from groups, um, there was I think South Korea, the Philippines, Malawi, Sudan, kind of Chile, Mexico, Peru, um, as well as um, from England and from Scotland, all kind of reflecting on climate justice. So there was everything from prayer and reflection, there were stories, there was interviews, but there was also kind of dance and song um, and things that are much more kind of celebratory to, to kind of recognise the, the beauty um, of creation. And we also kind of, that was stuff that we could prepare beforehand, that we could slot uh, into a 24 hour time frame. But then we also had um, segments that were kind of live from Glasgow. So that would be um, us um, in Glasgow, maybe praying, there might be singing, um, sharing stories that people had sent to us, um, or then kind of it ended as well with a mass. So it was a way that people could kind of almost be there with us in a way. And a really other important element of this vigil was that on the website, we invited people to kind of write in and to share their stories of climate change. And we then gathered these stories together and we sent them to the UN um, climate negotiators so that these voices of people around the world could be brought to the table uh, at the negotiations themselves. Um, so we had 50 stories shared and uh, on YouTube, I think we discovered that we'd had about 2,000 people viewing, but some of them were groups as well. So it seems like almost over 2,000 people joined us from across the world, from kind of uh, the US, Mexico, South Korea, India, Peru, um, all over. And it was actually something really powerful that kind of, there was just a couple of us huddled in a room somewhere in Glasgow, we were actually able to connect with people um, across the globe and kind of come together in prayer, but also to come together to learn and to listen to one another's experiences and to all participate in COP26 in some way. Um, and then after kind of our vigil was ended, those of us who were there kind of went out and we joined uh, the rally, uh, the rally through the, the streets of Glasgow, trying to kind of really be mindful of those voices that we'd heard over that past 24 hours. Um, and unfortunately, the outcome wasn't all that we dreamed of, particularly, um, you know, some of the people that we were hearing from over those 24 hours, um, you know, kind of how, whether it addresses their issues, maybe not, but actually it showed us that there was a really, something really powerful in being able to bring these voices together and that actually people really appreciated knowing that somehow their voice had made it. Um, and although we weren't kind of in the negotiation rooms themselves, we were very much outside, we were joined by so many other kind of faith groups and groups from civil society. And it was quite an energizing environment, you know, outside and um, kind of in the streets of people um, sharing their stories and their experiences. 
But I think as people of faith, we have a particularly unique kind of platform to be able to bring these voices together, to kind of give a voice to people that wouldn't normally be able to come to these uh, places and being able to come to these tables and to really kind of support each other in, in sharing that voice and sharing those stories. Um, and hopefully those stories and those voices will be able to get to people uh, who kind of have the power to make that change. But actually there's something really powerful in just hearing those stories and learning from one another, because I think that is something that really um, can challenge us and can be something that impels us to kind of act um, and to campaign for um, climate justice and hopefully um, a more safer world. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there, but thank you so much. Um, it's been really a privilege to share um, our COP26 story with all of you. Thank you.